Hi, it's Penny here and as usual I'm going to talk about some bookish things. Specifically today I wanted to talk about the last 1000 pages of fantasy that I've read. This is a series I've been doing lately where every time I read a thousand pages of a particular genre I do a wrap up of those books and I talk about what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, and who I might recommend those books to. So this time we're going to talk about them from worst to best, although I did give all of these books three stars, except for the last one, which I gave four stars. So I do think that all of these books are okay, and there would probably be someone that likes all of them. Also, all of the books except the last one again are part of a series, and I am hopeful that the series will improve as they go on so I am continuing with all of these series. The first two books that I'm going to be talking about are the first two books of the Inheritance Cycle and that is Aragon and Eldest. Now even though I have this in physical form I did listen to both of these on audiobook and I have to be honest the writing style wasn't really for me and so I really needed those audiobooks in order to get through these but there were some aspects that I enjoyed so I am glad that I read both of them. As I said I will be continuing on with the series series because I know that Christopher Paolini was very young when he started writing this series and so I'm hoping that as things go on he will just get better and better. I don't know that the second book proved that theory but that's what I'm hoping. So this series follows a boy named Aragon. He finds this rock or he thinks it's a rock. It turns out to be a dragon egg and he becomes one of the first dragon riders in a really long time. In the first book he's learning about what that means and trying to find somewhere where he can be safe. In the second book he is starting his training to learn how to be a proper dragon rider. I will say I found this in a lot of ways to be quite generic fantasy. Given the time that was written and the youth of the author I think that makes a lot of sense but it's set in this very Tolkien-esque world so we've got dwarves and elves and dragons and just all those classic fairy tale tropes. I do really like some of the values and the logic that Christopher Paolini puts into this book especially in the second book and one thing that I really loved about the audiobook is that I thought the voice that the narrator put on for Aragon sounded a lot like Mark Hamill when he played Luke in the early Star Wars movies and they're such similar characters in a way that that seemed perfect. So they're both being raised by their uncles and then something bad happens and their uncle dies and they're constantly complaining about nah, it's not fair and they're kind of still going through that same journey like realizing that they're the chosen one and training to gain their abilities. The two stories are very similar and so I found that particular voice really well done and really appropriate. In the second book Eldest I did think that the structure of the story and the plot was a little bit less clear. There is quite a big like plot twisty type thing at the end which was probably lacking from the first book but it didn't really seem to have much direction for a lot of the book whereas the first one I felt was quite a clear quest that we were following. So I think that I would recommend this book to people who really love dragons, um, potentially people who are quite new to fantasy or people who really like Tolkien type fantasy. Now I personally don't really like Lord of the Rings. My favorite Tolkien story is Rover Random which is a bit of a random one. I didn't really like Tolkien because I don't like his writing style but I don't like this writing style either but the world, the elements of the world are very similar so perhaps if you like Tolkien you might like this series too. Once I've read the next couple of books in the series I'll be able to say whether it gets better or not. So then the next best fantasy book that I have here to review and recommend would be Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. This is the first book in a trilogy although I believe there is another trilogy that has started to be being released as well and as I said in my wrap up I kind of ruined this book for myself by watching the movie first. I have to say I think the movie was incredibly well done. I really enjoyed it. So then this was a bit of a letdown. Partly because the movie already set me up for what was going to happen. So in this book I never really felt like there were any surprises and I don't know whether if I'd been reading it without having watched the movie I would have had that same experience or whether I would have found some of this stuff really interesting and unique. So this story is about Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This is a home where there are these children and it's all based on these weird photos 
So Ransom Rig has collected all these strange photos and also looked at other people's collections and then kind of built the story around these photos. And so most of the children in these photos are the children in the home for peculiar children and peculiar children have some kind of strange ability. However, most of the story we follow Jacob whose grandfather grew up in this home for peculiar children and has always been told stories by his grandfather about the different peculiar children. But as he got older he stopped believing these stories until his grandfather dies under mysterious circumstances and he ends up tracking this home down. I do have to say I don't think the story was particularly realistic maybe it didn't try to be but I just don't believe that Jacob's parents would have let him go looking for this home for peculiar children especially given his mental state after his grandfather passed away. I also thought he was quite a whiny brat given how privileged he was. And then the romance in the story is all based around Jacob and his grandfather's ex-girlfriend who is still the same age because there is some t small time travel aspect in this story. So Jacob has this thing with his grandfather's ex-girlfriend and I just found that kind of icky. Like I don't really believe that if I somehow ended up in the future and my boyfriend's grandson was there that I would want to date him. Oh that's so gross. Honestly like even if he was the same age as me it would still feel like pedophilia so I found that part kind of icky. I do also think that just the plot and the pacing was done so much better in the movie which is why this book let me down. However that said if you don't mind the idea of dating your boyfriend's grandson and also you like the idea of these peculiar children with all these different weird abilities and you kind of like creepy old photos and you don't mind that the writing style is quite basic. I feel like I'm not selling this one. I think it's an interesting world. I think maybe before I finally recommend this one I need to read more of the series to really get a feel as to whether it improves. But I did like some of the powers the kids had and it was kind of fun so it wasn't bad. I think it just wasn't what it was hyped to be. That hype always messing with your perceptions. Urgh. Okay next we're going to talk about Rebel of the Sands by Elwyn Hamilton. This is a beautiful cover for starters. I really love the cover and for that reason I really wanted to love this book. Unfortunately I couldn't quite give it more than three stars but I am so hopeful for this series because the main reason that it let me down is that the fantastical elements that I was promised don't show up until the end of the story but that means that the next two books should have it all the way through and so hopefully that means I will like it a lot more. So this story follows Amani who is this girl uh, her parents are dead and she lives with her uncle in the middle of the desert and her uncle has plans to either marry her himself or sell her off. She's not really keen about being stuck in this middle of the desert town at all so she decides to use her shooting skills to go out and earn herself some money in this shooting competition. While she's doing that she meets this guy named Jim and eventually they end up escaping together and going on a bit of an adventure. The story does have fantastical elements in that there are particular people who have different magical powers because that one of their parents was a djinn and once we met some of these characters and they started doing cool magical stuff I really enjoyed it. But I did feel that it was just a bit slow. I also thought the romance was quite predictable and we do meet this kind of group of people near the end and then some drama goes down and I thought we just hadn't really gotten attached enough to that group before the drama happens to get the emotional impact that the drama was trying to achieve. <sighs> trying to say stuff without spoiling you but it's hard. There are also a lot of parts to the story that just didn't seem very realistic and I know that it's fantasy but you still expect within fantasy to the, be some kind of reality set up that the characters live within and I didn't feel that things were realistic within the world that had been set up. But I am interested in some of the characters that were introduced near the end as well as the powers so I'm really hopeful that this series will improve. I think if you like desert fantasy with a little bit of an Arabian flavor but still a little bit wild west as well then I think you will like this. Just go into it expecting that there won't be too much fantastical stuff 
until the end. Okay, so then the last fantasy book that I am going to recommend to you today is Madigan's Quest by Margaret Mayhew. I gave this book four stars, but honestly, in my heart, I wanted to give it five stars. I just, when I looked at some of my other five stars, it doesn't quite compare, but I did really love this. And I will admit part of that is probably because Margaret Mayhew is a New Zealand author. I come from New Zealand. And this is a dystopian future that's quite obviously set in a dystopian New Zealand because there are Maori elements and also just a few like landscape and bits and pieces that make it seem like it's set in New Zealand. However, there's been this big event in the past called the destruction that has destroyed everything and now the roads tend to change and very hard to get from town to town. All the towns are quite small and they don't have much technology anymore but there are still remnants of our current world hanging around. So in the story we primarily follow this girl named Garland who is part of the Fantasia, Madigan's Fantasia. So she is a Madigan and the Madigans run this like circus troupe that travel around. Unfortunately right at the beginning they get attacked by this motorcycle gang and even though a couple of other characters have traveled back in time from the future in order to stop this incident, Garland's father does end up Dying. And so throughout this book uh, she's working with these two boys and this baby that have come back in time uh, to try and stop future things from going wrong. She's also dealing with the fact that her father has died and there's this new guy that is sort of forming a relationship with her mother and so she's dealing with that as well. And I thought that those aspects of the story where she's dealing with her father's death and this new family that's forming, I thought that was done really well. And I think because this is quite a young adult fantasy, like almost middle grade, but maybe not quite, um, I think it's probably relevant for a lot of people that age, like learning to deal with step parents and how to get along with them and how you can form a relationship with them without betraying your biological parent. So I thought that was really well done. Also, there are some other characters that I really love. So there's a character called Boomer who's basically just this kid who's just slightly younger than Garland. He loves to play his drums noisily all the time and I thought his development throughout the story was really great. And I started out kind of disliking him. By the end, I think he was my favorite character. Also, I really enjoyed the way that the Maori references were just so casually slipped into the story like it wasn't a big deal. And this book is also made into a TV series which I watched a while ago and I do really want to rewatch. It has um young Rose McIver, if you know who she is, um, from I Zombie, is that what it's called? It has Rose McIver. It also has um what's her name? Oh I can't remember any of their names. Hang on I gotta look up her name. Oh it also has like Danielle McCormack is uh, Garland's mother and a couple of other famous actor people in it. So it's a really great TV series. I do recommend it. I really want to rewatch it. And I can see why they made it into to a TV series because every chapter is very episodic because they arrive at a new town and there's a new issue that they need to overcome and then they do and then they move on to the next town. But somehow it doesn't get repetitive because every issue is different and there is a plot thread that goes throughout the story as well. And I remember in the TV series when they dropped those little bits of Maori I was really impressed and I was really impressed with it in the book as well. There is also a library in this book which was pretty cool. Always good to see a library in a book. I just think this is a really lovely story. I liked the little time travel aspect to it. I always like time travel books. I thought the characters all seemed really lovely except for the bad ones who were just just the right amount of awful for a young young adult novel. I think if you like young adult or middle grade fantasies that deal with a lot of family issues then you will really love this book. If you want a, like a tiny bit of time travel and a horrible monster bad guy this is definitely a good book to read. 
I really need to rewatch the TV series, like really, really soon. So what do you think? Have you read any of those fantasy books? If you have, I would love to talk to you about them more down in the comments and hear what you think about them. Or if you haven't read them, I'd love to hear whether you think you might pick them up in the future. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you next time.